Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Good morning. Good morning. Kumusta po kayo? Welcome everyone today here at Jesus and Tarasa Church. I'm super happy that you are here today sa church to sing songs of praise and to worship our God for He is our victory. Tayo po tayo lahat. Kawayan at gitean po natin yung nasa likod, harap at katabi. Please greet them with smile. Say hi! from Romans. Romans 8:37. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Despite our daily routines, our troubles, our problems na nangyayari sa atin. Huwag natin kakalimutan na ang grace or ang biyaya ni Lord ay mas marami kaysa sa problema natin. Tama. Because God will sustain us through His grace. Amen po ba? Please join us and let's sing the anthem.
father's only son cause you came with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. My dear brothers and sisters, let us rest on His grace, for Christ is our glory. Let us remind that this world is just temporary for us. Jesus, he is our Lord. Let's sing Christ our glory. <laughs> Try. 
Let's continue to linger in the presence of the Lord as we come to Him in prayer. Heavenly Father, indeed Christ is our glory and You are our hope, Lord. You are our blessed Redeemer. You have lived and You have conquered death. And Lord, we, we know, Lord, that there's absolutely nothing that is hidden from You. For You know our thoughts. You know what's in our hearts. You know our deepest desires, Lord. And with this, Lord, we humbly confess all the sins that we have done, all the unwholesome thoughts that we have thought of, all the words that are not pleasing to you. Lord, please cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Heavenly Father, teach us also to forgive others just as you have forgiven us. And may we also be forgiven, Lord, of the wrongs that we have done to others. Heavenly Father, we praise you for the life that we live. Lord, we praise you for the gift of worship, the gift to be with our brothers today, to sing songs of worship, to sing songs of praises to you. Thank you, Lord, for this freedom to freely proclaim our faith and to freely sing and declare the gospel to the ends of the earth lord we praise you for the men's fellowship yesterday we praise you lord for our speaker yesterday lord pastor raul who has challenged each and every one of us to put our hope in christ in times of trouble for jesus knows every trouble that we have jesus speaks the truth in his word and jesus will always help us lord in any trouble or any circumstances that we are in heavenly father we praise you for the gift of family that we're able to spend time with our family every day lord we praise you for our jobs that we're able to provide for the needs of our loved ones and most especially lord we praise you for the greatest gift of all that we have availed through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your gift of salvation. Heavenly Father, we know that it's only through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that we have been saved. We know, Lord, that it is not through good works that we will be spending eternity with you, but it's only through the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross that we have been saved. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world. We pray for all economies in the world, Lord, for we know that each and every economy has a domino effect, especially to our country, which is the Philippines. Lord, we pray for our president. We pray for all our economic leaders. We pray, Lord, for our barangay officials. We pray for everyone in the government, Lord, that may they be able to serve their people 
or your people, Lord, with the right heart and the right and the right reasons, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for our local church, GCF Santa Rosa. Lord, we pray for our leaders, most especially our pastor who is leading your flock. Heavenly Father, we pray for our elders. We pray for all our ministry heads. We pray for our deacons, our members, and all our attendees. Heavenly Father, make us remember of our mission that it is to know you and to make you known. And make us remember, Lord, that we cannot share you if we do not have the right relationship with you. Teach us, Lord, to be more intimate and to know you every step of the way, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for each and every family in this local church. We pray most especially for fathers who are leading their family. Lord, we pray as well for the mothers who are taking care of the children. And also, Lord, we pray for every individual, Lord, who are walking alongside with you. Heavenly Father, may we all remember that our relationship and our love to you will be of the reflection of our love to others as well. Make us remember, Lord, that in order for us to love is, or the reason for us is that we love is because you have loved us first, Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are sick, who are in, who are hurting. Heavenly Father, we know that you know each and every needs that we have. Lord, we praise you and we want to honor you in our lives. May everything that we do and everything that we are bring glory to you alone. And we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Welcome to Coffee Evangelism Ministry. Ito ang ministry na kung saan kami ay nag-share ng gospel ng good news ng ating Panginoon na kung saan ay uh, share natin yung kaligtasan. Nag-offer kami ng free coffee at habang nag-coffee ang mga bisita ay nag-share naman kami ng salita ng Diyos. Bilang mga volunteer, alam niyo po, napakasarap po sa pakiramdam na nakakapagbahagi tayo ng salita ng ating pagdaman. Lahat po tayo ay kabilang ng kape. Ibig sabihin po ay kabilang ako sa pagpapalaganap ng Ibanghelyo. Yan po ang miling ng kape. So sa inyong lahat na nandyan, mga kapa-opesya, mga kapatiran. Nangangailangan po kami ng volunteer na kung saan ay handang ipagkalot ang magandang balita ng kaligtatan ng ating Panginoong Isus. Welcome po kayo.
Good morning, mga kapatid. What a wonderful uh, Sunday morning. Puri yung po ang Panginoon na uh, that uh, tayo muli ay nagkasama-sama ngayong araw po na linggo. And uh, ngayon po, officially po, ay nagsimula ng second quarter of the the year 2024. So, nandun na tayo sa pangalawang quarter po. No? Four, yung four quarters po uh, ng ating pong series. Kung napansin niyo po, uh, if you've been here for the past a uh, few Sundays, siguro napansin nyo na nagbago na yung ating uh, nasa PowerPoint. No? So, the first quarter, we talk about uh, be, uh, belong, no? belonging to Christ. So, yung ating pong annual series is Experiencing Christ Together. And today, we will now start yung second part of the series, which is Behold. No? It is our aim that we have uh, the clear and proper perspective, proper view and vision of Jesus Christ, no? so that we will grow in Christ-likeness. And uh, today, uh, join me sa ating pong, uh, pag-aaral po ng salita uh, ng Panginoon uh, ngayon pong uh, araw po ng linggo. Alam ko, mainit na ngayon panahon na ito. Ano? Uh, meron daw pong El Nino. Ayan, uh, but uh, salamat pa rin sa Panginoon for His sustenance. And we do not lo- lose hope because God uh, is the one who sustains us sa lahat pong ng mga seasons Uh, sa ating pong buhay. Uh, meron pong kasabihan no, na tell me who your friends are and I will tell you your friends. De, who you are. <laughs> ano pong ibig sabihin po nun? Uh, siguro narinig nyo na yung fami- fami- that's a familiar uh, quote, no? a familiar saying. Tama po ba? And it's quite true. Kasi kung sino yung lagi mong kasama, uh, uh, the people you spend much of your time with can shape uh, your character, your inner being. Diba? Kaya nga sabi sa 1 Corinthians 15.33, bad company corrupts good character. So, pwede kang ma, uh, tumulad, no? maging katulad ng mga tao that you are actually uh, in company with. But uh, similarly, dun sa ating pong, uh, relationship kay Jesus, if we want to be more like Christ, we need to really spend time with Him. Uh, gusto ko yung sinabi ng isang pastor dito. No? Sabi niya, keep company with Jesus. Or keep, or keep company with Jesus. Meaning, hindi lang tayo makikipag-hang out kay Jesus every Sunday morning, but uh, we need to be with Him and let Him lead us uh, sa lahat ng araw ng ating pong mga buhay. No? So that is our aim, no? na uh, mas makilala natin si Kristo at lumago tayo sa ating relationship sa Kanya in order uh, to become like Him. No? And that's actually the, the, the goal of our series, itong uh, susunod na tatlong, bu- uh, tatlong buwan. And the title of our uh, message this morning is Behold uh, to Become. Behold to Become. Yeah. So, I'm sure you have an idea why uh, I put that as the title. Behold to become. It is our aim to become more like Christ as we behold Him, as we uh, have a clearer perspective of Him in our daily life. And so, uh, the text that we're going to talk about this morning is Second uh, Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. I personally chose this passage because there is a much, there is a, Beautiful lesson to learn here about uh, gazing uh, the, uh, the glory of God. No? So, p- pwede niyo po bang buksan yung inyo pong mga Bible dito po sa passage po na ito. 2 Corinthians uh, 3 verse 18. At kung nakita niyo na po, pwede po kayong tumayo at babasahin po natin ito ng sabay-sabay. 2 Corinthians, not 1 Corinthians. No? 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. And we will read until sa chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. Okay? We will continue reading. Doon po tayo magtatapos sa verse 6 ng chapter 4. So, uh, let's read this all together. First Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful 
underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ our Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Praise be to God uh, for the reading of His Word. You may now take your seats po, mga kapatid. Ito pong uh, Second Corinthians is part of uh, a two, ano po, dalawang sulat po ito ni Paul uh, sa mga taga-Korinto. Ano? We have First Corinthians and Second Corinthians. And uh, if you will read these two books or two epistles, you will notice that there is a big problem uh, that Hindi lang si Apostle Paul, but the whole church of Corinth was experiencing. This is the most, uh, ito yung season ni Paul, the hardest uh, season in the life of the Apostle Paul as a minister of Jesus Christ. Yung time po na sumusulat po, po siya sa mga taga-Korinto. So makita natin, uh, ito pong aklat po na ito, very personal. We can see how transparent the Apostle Paul was sa kanyang pag express ng kanyang damdamin sa mga mananampalataya na pinaglingkuran niya for some years. Siya po ay nag-serve doon sa church po in Corinth. But the problem was, there was a group of people who were unjustly attacking him and making a campaign to discredit him or to, to question or to attack his moral integrity. So itong mga tao na to, they are quite successful in that campaign. Nasirain po ang reputation po nitong si Apostle Paul. Pero alam naman natin si Apostle Paul how strong he was sa mga attacks, personal attacks. Marami siyang mga bashers. Nakita naman natin sa pagbabasa natin ng Bible na mukhang sanay na siya sa mga attacks po ng mga tao. Tama po ba? Pero bakit po siya particularly he was so hurt during this time? Uh, why do we see much pain sa kanyang puso while he was writing the book? Uh, ito, lalo na itong 2 Corinthians. Ayun po kung bakit? Because he loves these people so much. He loves these people so much that uh, they have also the capacity to inflict much pain in the heart of the Apostle Paul. Mahal niya ang mga mananampalatayang ito. And he wants them to renounce or to overcome itong mga maling katuruan at mga tao na nagliligaw po sa kanila mula po sa katotohanan. And so, in the midst of this very challenging time in the ministry, Paul says in this chapter, chapter 4, verse 1, ano ang kanyang sabi po dyan sa passage? Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. And isang question po nating lahat, no? Pa- bakit kaya ano, si Apostle Paul uh, would say uh, those words? No? Uh, na he has the right mentality in the midst of this very challenging uh, season ng kanyang ministry. Why did he say that we do not lose heart? We will see that. Uh, we will see the answer to that question as we uh, continue with the lesson for today. No? And so, ngayon pong, uh, hapon, ah, ngayon pong umaga na to, and I will direct your attention dito po sa particular verse, verse 18, chapter 3, verse 18. Let me read once again. No? Sabi dito ni Paul, And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Now you notice that I highlighted the word transformed, and the original word for that is metar- metamorpho. Siguro narinig niyo na yung uh, metamorphosis, no? Yung mga nag-aral po sa science, di ba? Yung paro-paro, saan ang galing po yan? Sa bulate? Di ba? 
Hindi po nagiging paru-paru ang bulatik. Sa uod, di ba? Yung uod, wala siyang pakpak, no? pero naging beautiful butterfly. So, ang tawag po doon ay metamorphosis. Nag-change, pa, nag-change po siya ng form. Okay? Yung word po na yan, metamorpho, it appeared in the New Testament uh, four times. Isa sa Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Ang sabi po doon ni Apostle Paul, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And another occurrence po nan is when Jesus transfigured. Nagbago siya ng anyo. Nung nagpakita si Moses at saka si Elias in, uh, on the mountain and they were, he was there with Peter and nagbagong anyo po siya. Naalala niyo yung event? Ang sabi, ang word na ginamit po doon ay metamorpho which means he transfigured. He nagkaroon po ng change in form. And in this particular passage, 2 Corinthians 3.18, yung pong word na transformed was actually um, described, uh, it is a, a description dun sa word na we, ano, we all, tayo po mga mananampalataya, we are all being transformed into the image of God, into the same image of God from one degree of glory to another. So, here in this passage, we will learn some descriptions about transformation. And the first description here, mga kapatid, is transformation is a work of God. We have to be very clear dito po, mga kapatid, no? Ang, ang nagbabago po sa atin ay walang iba kundi ang Panginoon. Sabi po dyan sa verse, For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Wala pong, ako po, I have no power to change people's life. I cannot change uh, yung buhay po ng mga tao. I do not have that capacity. And siguro kahit yung sinong pinakamauhusay, magsalita, pinakamagagaling na tao sa buong mundo, we la- they lack power no, to, uh, to transform lives. It is only God uh, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Siya po nagbabago po ng buhay. Of course, the Holy Spirit na nagre-reside po sa atin. Binabago po tayo ng ating Panginoon. So sa church po, mga kapatid, we have to understand that. Sa ating ministry, ang Diyos po nagbabago ng buhay. Hindi po ang kahit anong ganda ng music. No? Music does not actually change lives. Kahit mapaiyak natin lahat ng tao, no? lumabas lang lahat ng tao from church, umiiyak. Music cannot change or transform people's lives. It is our Lord Jesus Christ na nagbabago ng buhay. No? So, and that's why it's very clear sa, even sa ating pong vision, sa ating church. No? Ano pong vision natin? We want to see transformed lives and communities through our Lord Jesus Christ. So I hope that uh, we are clear uh, on that, mga kapatid, na ang ating Panginoong Isus po ang siyang nagbabago ng buhay. And that's why if you want to see people's lives change or transformed, what do we need to do? We need to introduce Christ to these people. Ipakilala natin si Kristo sa kanila upang sila magkaroon ng isang genuine and growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And in the process, they will grow into Christ-likeness. They will be transformed. No? So, yan po yung una pong uh, description po dyan, mga kapatid. We cannot manufacture transformation. It is God who transforms people's lives. Now, we have to also take note here, mga kapatid, that the transformation that is being described here is not that of the transformation na pwede natin maranasan kapag kumilala ka kay Kristo. By the way, uh, in the Bible, we, we, have, we are truly transformed uh, the moment we believe in Jesus Christ. Tama ba? So, yan yung tinatawag natin na conversion. Okay? Kaya sabi sa 2 Corinthians 5.18, tama ba? 17? Ika mali yata ako. If anyone is in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So, isa isa ng bagong nilang. That is true. Tayo po ay binabago ng Panginoon. Uh, the moment we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, from dead, mula sa kamatayan, tayo po ay naging alive in Christ Jesus. So, there is transformation that took place sa ating pong mga buhay. Pero meron pong transformation. Ang itinutukoy po dito transformation is an ongoing transformation sa mga mananampalataya. And that actually uh, directs us dun sa ano, description po natin uh, rito. Ano? Uh, let me just highlight yung pong word po na yan, are being transformed. We are being transformed. 
sa mga nag uh, mahilig po sa grammar, siguro I'm sure familiar po kayo dun sa two types of sentence which is there is a passive, there is an active and passive sentence, tama ba? Yung active, the yung kusino yung subject, he is the the doer of the action. But there is another arrangement which is yung tinatawag natin na uh, passive, no? Passive is the, the subject is the receiver of the action. Okay? So here, we, we all, that is a subject, we are all being transformed. We, that is passive. Meaning, we are not the ones changing ourselves. That's impossible. We cannot change ourselves. It is God. We are being transformed into the image of God. Now, as we continue, mga kapatid, another description here of transformation is that it is an ongoing process. It is a long, continuous, continuous process na pwede po nating maranasan. And this is not an instant ano, event, yung transformation po dito, mga kapatid. No? Hindi po siya parang sa isang iglap ay you are already transformed, no? Uh, let me read yung par part po na yan. We are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Sabi, sabi sa ibang salin, from glory to glory. So that is a gradual transformation. Dahan-dahan. God is not on a rush para baguhin po tayo. Ang Diyos, hindi po siya sobrang nagmamadali na, Okay, tumanggap ka sa akin ngayon. Bukas, dapat ay totally transformed ka na. It takes time, mga kapatid. It's a process that we need to undergo, mga kapatid. Eh, sa panahon po natin ngayon, sanay pa naman tayo na gusto natin lahat instant. Eh, no? diba? Parang gusto natin mabilis lahat. Diba? Kahit pag pumunta ka sa isang restaurant, gusto mo, dyan na ka agad. Eh, miss, ayaw natin yung uhuliin pa yung manok. Eh, no? Diba? Gusto natin pag nandiyan tayo, oh, nasa na? Nasa na yung pagkain, di ba? Lalo ko, there was a child na lit-lit pa ang baby, ano, nanonood po siya ng, ano, na, sa kanyang screen, sa tablet, no? Ay, nanonood siya sa YouTube, bilang nag-commercial, no? Iyak siya. Nakakalungkot, ano? Kapag pagka umabot sa gano'n na, kumbaga, wala ng patience, no? Ang isang bata. Huwag rin naman natin na sanayin na ang isang bata ay Baka di atin tinuturuan na mag-antay. Alam niyo po, beautiful things in life takes time. Hindi po siya minamadali. Ano? So it is a gradual transformation, mga kapatid. Yung pagbabago na, na gusto ng Diyos na mangyari po sa atin, it is a continuous, gradual transformation that only occurs when we really submit to the Lord sa Kanyang kalooban. No? So, uh, we have to bear with, ano, hindi po, hindi po yan mabilisan, mga kapatid, no? Uh, we need to understand that it requires time, mga kapatid. And another description about transformation is that it takes place when we behold God. This is the means or paraan parang isang tao ay magkaroon ng transformation sa kanyang buhay. He needs to behold the glory of God. Sabi po dyan sa passage, and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. So we need to be with Jesus to focus our attention to God, to direct our attention to Jesus so that we will have a clear vision or view of Him sa ating pong mga buhay. And I like the word behold because in the original language, it actually can be translated as reflect. We reflect the glory of the Lord. What does that mean, mga kapatid? Reflect. Ibig sabihin, we do not bear, di tayo talaga nagtataglay po ng uh, glory, but we reflect the glory of God. Because we behold Him, we see His glory, we look to His glory, and we become uh, we become more like Him. And I like the, ano, no? uh, how the Apostle Paul mentioned Moses to illustrate this particular ano, uh, event, na, yung word na beholding the glory of the Lord or reflecting the glory of the Lord. Because this is, some, this is experience or this was experienced by Moses in the Old Testament. Naalala nyo nangyari kay Moses, kasama siya ng Panginoon for 40 days in Mount Sinai, 
Nalala niyo yung, his, yung story, ano? Yung, yung mga Israelites, ang tagal-tagal nila nag-aantay sila kay, ano? Sabi, ano nangyari kay Moses? Andito tayo sa ilang, sa desert. Ay, 40 days na siya na doon sa ilang. Ah, sa bundok, di ba? Sa Mount Sinai. Then after 40 days, he went down. Nakita niya yung mga tao worshiping an idol, no? They formed, kumuha sila ng uh, Diyos Diyosan. Pero itong si Moses, nung bumaba siya from the mountain, according to the description, yung face niya was shining, no? Uh, yung, there, there was glory of God seen in his life. It's not that he is glorious, we are not glorious, but because of his, alam mo yun, he, ref, he, he saw the glory of God and his life, ref, in his life, nagre-reflect yung glory ng ating Panginoon. And, alam niyo mga kapatid, yan po ang nais ng Panginoon sa atin, mag-reflect sa atin, makita natin ang kanyang kaluwalatian so that people will see His glory in our lives. Yan po ang layunin, ang, ang desire po ng Panginoon sa atin. We are not glorious, but we bear, we, we reflect the glory of the Lord. Parang yung buwan, mga kapatid, di ba? Ang buwan, wala naman talaga siyang liwanag. Alam niyo po ba na ang, ang, ang buwan po, wala naman siyang, wala talaga siyang liwanag, pero bakit po siya maliwanag sa gabi? Kasi reflector siya, ano? parang yung mga, di ba sa gabi pa nagdadrive tayo, may makikita, may mga signage dyan na bilang umiilaw, no? Ba't umiilaw? Kasi nasinagan ng ano, reflector pala. Na? So yung, yung buwan, ganun din, no? Dahil tin, tinatapansan siya ng araw, so nagre-reflect sa kanya yung liwanag po ng araw. So same din sa atin mga kapatid, the more we behold God, we are being transformed into this glory from one degree to another. Wow. So, the key here, mga kapatid, is to behold Jesus. To have a clear vision of Jesus Christ sa ating pong mga buhay. And, isn't it that yung lahat ng ginagawa natin sa church, ang aim naman natin is to have a clear vision of Christ sa ating mga buhay. Kaya nga sa ating mga, whenever we gather together, we ask each other, no? how is your relationship with Jesus Christ? Kumusta ang iyong kaugnayan kay Kristo? What we mean by that? We mean, we are, we are asking, kumusta, how, how is your vision of Christ? Are you growing in your, your knowledge of Jesus Christ? No? Because everything that we do is supposed or ought to uh, direct us, direct our attention sa ating pong Panginoon. Sa ating mga worship, di ba? Sa pagsamba natin. Ang goal natin is to be drawn to the presence of God to see Him as He who really is and to respond to Him to who He is. That's beholding God. And even in prayer, no? every, time, every time we come to God in prayer, our purpose is to direct our attention sa ating pong Panginoon. So sa lahat po ng ating pong mga ginagawa, it ought to direct us yung ating attention sa ating Panginoon. Even nga po itong gagawin natin mamaya, ano, nakikita niyo po ba sa harap? We have here yung pong communion or Lord's table Ito po ay wala po yung kapangyarihan ano? because it only symbolizes the works of Jesus Christ. And every time we do that, mga kapatid, we, we direct our attention to Jesus. We see Him as a glorious God who resurrected from the dead. And He offered His life. He died for our sins. And He is a victorious God. Now, that is our vision. Unless we have a proper vision, mga kapatid, hindi po magiging maayos ang ating pong buhay. Agad din, hindi klaro ang pagkakita natin, ang ating uh, pagtanaw sa ating pong Panginoon. Ang lahat ng bagay sa buhay natin will be chaotic. Kaya nga po, kapag nagdadrive tayo, mga kapatid, kapag nagdadrive tayo, di ba, laging ipinapaalala sa radio, eyes on the road, di ba? Eyes on the road. Don't be distracted. Ay, minsan, yung iba, nagdadrive, dami-dami ginagawa, nagsa-cellphone, ano? kaya po nara- nauso ang mga accident. Kaya po ba kaya niyo pong mag-drive tapos nag-make-up pa kayo habang nasa skyway? Parang hirap no, no? may make-up ka. Distracted, no? Kasi yung mata mo kung sa, nakatingin sa salami, hindi ka makapag-focus, no? But we need our eyes to be on the road. What do I mean, mga kapatid? Is it possible for a person to live his life at ang focus niya ay ang ating Panginoon? Katulad nung binasa kanina ni, ano, ni Sister Z, that uh, our, set our minds or our eyes to the things above where Christ is seated. Diba? We need to direct our attention to fix our eyes on Jesus. 
That's the challenge, mga kapatid, because we are always distracted. Our vision of Christ is always impeded sa panahon po natin ngayon. Napakaraming mga bagay na pwedeng maka-impede or maka-interrupt sa ating vision of Christ. Di ba? Ang una, alin po, the first uh, reason why people lose sight of Jesus is because they entertain sins. Sin, yun po ang kauna-unahang nakaka-apekto sa ating focus. Na, na we lose sight of Jesus when we entertain sins. And so next week, we'll be talking about that. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Sabi doon, fix your eyes on Jesus. Meaning, you, you, you need also to, to renounce sins in order to gaze Jesus. In order to behold Jesus, we need to renounce sin. At marami pang ibang mga, ano, mga interruptions tayo na pwede maranasan sa mundo. Sometimes, may mga interruption, mga problema. Si so, Apostle Paul, ang dami niyang problema nung time po na to, no? And yet, he does not lose heart. Why? Because he has the proper perspective of Jesus. Pero sa totoo lang, sometimes because of our problems, lumilit ang tingin natin kay Lord. Kapag ka ang, tingin, ang tingin natin sa problema, sobrang laki, no? Ang tingin natin kay Lord, parang ang liit-liit. And so we need to have a clearer vision of Christ in every situation ng ating pong mga buhay. Sometimes we are distracted by the things of this world. The cares of this world can distract us. And sometimes, ito po ang pwede mangyari. You may be in the church, ministry, busy-busy ka sa church, and yet you do not have a proper vision of Christ in your life. Simply because you are so busy with the ministry. I'm not saying that ministry is wrong, but there are times in our busyness in the ministry, we lose sight of Jesus. Because ang focus natin, oh, ito na na naman gagawin ko, gagawin ko, gagawin ko. And we do not have a deeper devotion sa ating pong Panginoon. So the goal here, mga kapatid, sa susunod na mga uh, pag-uusapan natin in the coming Sundays is for us to, to direct our attention to Jesus and learn from Him, grow in His character so that we will also grow in Christ-likeness. So kaya ang title po ngayon ng message natin is Behold to Become. As we keep company with Jesus, it is, our, it is my prayer, mga kapatid, that we will grow, that we will all grow in Christ-likeness. So we need to renounce, mga kapatid, yung mga pwedeng maka-distract po sa atin. Pansinin niyo po, ito, uh, itong uh, word po na to, beholding the glory of the Lord. Meron po dyan binanggit na motivation po sa atin. Anong motivation dyan ni Paul? We all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord. Wow! What does that mean, mga kapatid? Tinanggal na ng Panginoon yung veil. Ano bang Tagalog sa veil? Sabi sa Tagalog version, talokbong or tabing. Ano? Uh, kayo po ba nagtalokbong na ng kumot? Ano po nakikita niyo pag naka, may nakatalokbong po kayo? Dilim lang. Ano? Madilim. You do not see the light kasi nakatalokbong ka. Di ba? Pero according to the passage, since we have now unveiled face, natanggal na yung tabing or yung, yung uh, talokbong, we can now behold the glory of God. We can now reflect the glory of God. Okay? And how did that happen, mga kapatid? We need actually to read the previous verses para maintindihan po natin itong veil that was discussed in the previous chap- uh, previous verses. Sabi ni Paul sa verse 14, but their minds were hardened. Referring to the uh, Israel community who do not receive Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, for to this day, when they read the old covenant, the scriptures, habang binabasa nila ang banal na kasiratan, according to the, to the Apostle Paul, that same veil remains unlifted. Hindi pa inaalis. Hindi naaalis yung, yung, yung talokbong sa kanilang mga muka. Because only through Christ it is taken away. Paano daw ang isang tao maaalis yung talokbong na yun sa kanyang muka? He needs to turn to Jesus Christ. Sabi po dyan ni Paul, because only through Christ it is taken away. And that's why ang una natin ginagawa para ang isang tao magkaroon ng totoong pagbabago sa buhay niya is to introduce Christ, ipakilala si Kristo, ang kanyang mabuting balita. Because it is only through the gospel of Jesus Christ na pwede pong magkaroon po ng uh, totoong transformation po sa buhay po ng isang tao. And so we, as we continue, sabi sa verse 15, Yet to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil 
lies over their hearts. Inulit niya po yung ulit yung veil. No? But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Paano daw po nare-remove ang, ang veil, mga kapatid? It is when one person, let me highlight that, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Kaya sabi po ni Paul, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So what does the Apostle Paul mean there, mga kapatid? He, he, is, exp, he is explaining to us yung proseso kung paano po tinanggal yung veil or yung talukbong sa mukha natin sa pamagitan po ng Panginoong Kristo and through the work of the Spirit na nagpapalaya po sa atin. Because whenever, when, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Tayo po'y pinalaya ng Diyos. And knowing this, as a motivation, mga kapatid, sabi ni Paul sa next verse, verse 18, we with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Dahil inalis na po yung tabing at talukbong, mga kapatid, we can now see God and His glory. That is a wonderful ano, no? uh, motivation po sa ating lahat, mga kapatid. Because we can enjoy God. We can see God in our day-to-day life because you turn to Jesus Christ. And so kung ano man ang pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, you do not lose hope. You do not lose heart. Because you see the work of God. You see how glorious God is sa iyong buhay. And that's why we need to direct our attention po sa ating pong Panginoon. Uh, every day of our lives. Transformation takes place when we, when we behold God. No? We need to behold God and His glory. Since the veil has been removed, we can see God's glory clearly. It's not... Um, It's not something na parang um, hidden po sa atin, mga kapatid. Kung ikaw ay mana ng palataya, you can see the glory of God in your life. In Jesus Christ. Because He is the one who has taken or who has removed the, the veil. Sabi sa chapter 4, if we will continue reading, chapter 4 verse 4, yung mga unbelievers daw, they were blinded by Satan, no? So that they will not see the glory of the gospel, the message of Christ. That's a condition of the people of the world who do not accept or who do not, who do not receive Jesus Christ. They are blinded by the truth. By the, uh, they are blinded from seeing the glory, the glorious uh, gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the challenge here, mga kapatid, sa atin is to behold God's glory. Since God's glory is uh, visible and is, it is now Um, we, are, we are now un, uh, unveiled, mga kapatid. We can see the glory of God. So don't, li- lose, don't lose sight of Christ. Look to Him at all times. In every circumstance, let His glory shine, mga kapatid. What does that mean? That we let the glory of God shine. As we direct our attention sa ating Panginoon, He studies Word, we grow in our knowledge of Jesus Christ, we will see how Christ is working in every circumstance of our life. I don't know, mga kapatid, kung anong circumstance mo ngayon. Anong pinagdadaanan mo ngayon? Pero isang kasiguruhan ko, bilang, kung ikaw isang kristyano, kung tinagap mo na si Kristo, mga kapatid, Jesus is working in your life. Maybe you, you do not recognize it. But we should see, we should look at Christ at all times, in every circumstance. And when we direct our attention sa Panginoon, you will notice It will change everything. It will change your perspective in life. It will change how you, you, you view your life. Just like the Apostle Paul, he was experiencing the, uh, the most dip- difficult uh, season of his life as a minister, and yet, andun yung kanyang pag-asa. Ano? And going back to the question that I posted earlier, how could Paul say that he, is not, he does not lose heart? Uh, let me offer to you uh, John MacArthur's uh, answer to that question. No? Bakit kaya si Paul nasabi niya yun? Na I do not lose heart. We do not lose heart because we have this ministry. And according to John MacArthur, how can the Christian who struggles in his life with all of the trials and issues maintain his joy? How can we hold unto our confidence How can we hang in there faithfully ministering in the midst of the things that come our way? 
What is the answer, brothers and sisters? The answer is by never taking our eyes of Jesus. The church in Corinth has lost sight of Jesus and that's why it became a chaotic church. Pero tayo bilang mga mana ng palataya, the challenge for us today, mga kapatid, is to go back to Jesus. Let Him uh, be the Lord of our life. So, hindi lang basta tingnan natin siya, but we, we submit everything to His authority to allow Him to, to take the lead sa ating pong mga buhay. I don't know, mga kapatid, kung anong pinagdadaanan mo ngayon, but my challenge to you is don't lose sight of Jesus. Parang yung paalala po ng mga radio DJ, oh, eyes on the road. Eyes on the road. Fix your eyes sa ating Panginoon. At katulad ng isang awitin, there will be a result when you direct your attention sa ating Panginoon. You focus on Jesus and His character and His word. You grow in understanding of His glory, mga kapatid. What will happen? According to the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Have you heard of that song? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. When we turn our eyes to Jesus, then everything changes. Our perspective, the way we view the world, it also changes, mga kapatid. And our life is now in the proper orientation, mga kapatid. Kapag ka po, we, we have the proper vision of Jesus Christ sa ating pong mga buhay. And so, yung po ang challenge po sa atin, mga kapatid. Behold to become. Behold to become. Don't lose sight of Jesus. Always grow in your uh, in your vision of Jesus Christ. And so, ngayon umagang ito, uh, I want to invite you to a word of prayer. No? First, magpasalamat tayo sa Panginoon for removing, for removing the veil. And second, if hindi pa natin kinikilala si Kristo sa ating mga buhay, let's, let's receive Him ngayong oras nito. The, the promise of His salvation na pwede tayo magkaroon ng totoong relationship sa Panginoon. Pwedeng maalis lahat itong mga uh, bagay na to na naghahad lang po sa atin. Para makilala natin ang Diyos. If you turn to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, His gospel, na sa pamagitan ng mabuting balita, pwede tayong magkaroon ng tunay na kaugnayan sa Diyos. I want, to, uh, I want to lead you in a word of prayer. Tayo po yung manalangin. Panginoon, marami pong salamat sa iyo pong mga salita. Thank you because the veil has been removed when we come to believe in Jesus Christ and His glorious gospel. We have seen your glory, Lord. And Lord, it is your desire, Lord, that we grow in our knowledge of you gradually, moment by moment, continually, Panginoon, that we grow from glory to glory so that your glory will shine in our lives just like with Moses, Panginoon, where people sees you, sees your, your glory in his life, Panginoon. Lord, we want to grow in our intimacy with you. Thank you, Lord, for removing the veil. Thank you that we, are, we can enjoy looking to Jesus, seeing your glory. Glory, Panginoon. Salamat po. And today, Lord, we want to, uh, to surrender everything to you, Panginoon. May you transform each one of us. Maging kawangis kami ng aming Panginoong Yesus. Panginoon, marami pong salamat sa iyo pong mga salita. Ito pong aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Yesus. Amen, amen. Praise be to, to God. Ngayon po, tayo po ay magpapatuloy po sa ating pagsamba sa ating pong Panginoon. Uh, as I said, uh, we'll be uh, doing the Blessed Communion. Again, this, these things that are in front of us, this do not has, this, ito, ito po ay walang kapangyarihan. No? It has no power to save us from sin and death. It is Jesus Christ no? who uh, offered this life para po tayo tubusin sa ating pong mga kasalanan. And what we're going to do now, mga kapatid, what we are going to do is to remember the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Kung saan inialay niya ang kanyang buhay para sa katubusan natin sa ating mga kasalanan. 
And let me invite you sa panalangin. Tayo po yung manalangin. Panginoon, marami pong salamat dahil ikaw ay nag-aali ng iyong sarili para sa amin, sa amin mga kasalanan. And Lord, napakagrabe, Panginoon, ang pag-ibig mo sa amin that, Lord, lahat ng mga weight ng sin na, na nagpapabigat sa amin hanggang ngayon, Panginoon, uh, the weight of sin, Lord, that we cannot bear, Panginoon, Lord, you bore them on the cross. You took all the weight of our sins there on the cross when you offered your life, Lord, as a sacrifice for our sins. Thank you, Lord, because remission of sins has been made possible because of your perfect sacrifice, Panginoon. And Lord, sa aming pag-alala ngayon, Panginoon, may it direct us to you, Lord, to have a clearer vision of you, Panginoon, and may we live our lives under uh, your authority. May we live our lives in complete submission to the glorious, victorious Jesus Christ. Salamat po, Panginoon. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen, amen. invite everyone to please stand mga kapatid and let's uh, let's all raise the bread taas po natin ang tinapay ang simbolo ng katawan na ating Panginoong Yesus for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed he took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Kainin po natin ang tinapay. Let us all raise the cup. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread and drink the cup, 
you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's say these words in memory of Christ till He returns. Let us all drink the cup. Praise be to God. You may now take your seats. And as our uh, cups are being collected, let's prepare to, uh, to worship the Lord uh, through our offerings. Atin po paghahandog po sa Kanya. Tayo po ay uh, nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon. Dahil sa kabila po ng mga krisis, lalo na po ngayong panahon ng El Nino, God continues to sustain us. And so let's honor Him, let's praise Him, and let's be, be a good steward. Uh, of His resources. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon, we want to, to praise You and thank You, Lord, for all Your blessings na binibigay mo sa aming lahat. Or we want to, uh, to bless Your name and to honor You, Lord, with the resources that You have entrusted to us. Nawa po, maging good stewards po kami ng iyong mga resources. Lord, we bless You and praise Your name. Salamat po. Nawa, mag-glorify ka, Lord, sa buhay namin as we give back to You, Panginoon. Ito po ang aming dalangin sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Ayan, praise be to God kasi uh, just, uh, ito lang kahapon, no? yesterday, ang mga kalalakihan po natin ay nakapag, nagkaroon po ng breakfast fellowship. So medyo, uh, ilang, uh, medyo matagal din tayong hindi nagkasama-sama po yung mga kalalakihan po natin. So praise God, no? kahapon po yan nangyari. No? Uh, this is an answered prayer kasi we have been praying na magkasama-sama po muli ang mga kalalakihan natin. Uh, so that uh, ma-disciple natin sila so that they will grow also in leading their families. So po rin po ang Panginoon. At meron na po tayong bagong hashtag, no, mga kalalakihan. Kasi dati lagi pag sinasabing mago, lagi, laging, laging ano, inaasar po kami na mago, magulo. Ano? Kaya yung lo, nilagay na po namin sa unahan. Kaya lo mago. Yan. Lumago sa mago. Yan. So po rin po ang Panginoon. Palapakan po natin ang Panginoon no, for answering our prayers let's continue for our men. Uh, let's continue to pray for our men that they will continue to grow uh, sa kanilang relationship kay Lord uh, pray with us mga kapatid and if you are uh, uh, ikaw, ikaw ay lala, kalalakihan at hindi ka pa naka, naka-join po mga kapatid so we would like to invite you sa mga susunod po na events po ng mago ayan so po rin po ang Panginoon salamat din sa buhay ng ating uh, ministry head si Deacon J ayan uh, na, Deacon J pwede ka bang tumayo <laughs> yeah. so Siya po ang uh, naglilid ngayon sa mga kalakihan. And also, we have GGs. Kung wala pa po kayong GG, meron tayong mga GG para sa mga kalakihan. For you to get to know them, yung ibang mga kalakihan, meron pong open GG rin uh, after the service. Dito po sa labas, meron po. So, you, you may be introduced po sa ating mga kalakihan. Hindi lang po mga kalakihan, pati rin po sa mga kababaihan at sa uh, mga kabataan at saka sa mga young pro natin. Okay, ito po, bigyan lang po namin kayo ng uh, report about the OJ event last Holy Week. Kasi last week, ang pinakita lang po namin sa inyo ay mga vid- yung video ng ating pong uh, naging mission. Yan. So, nakakatuwa po, dun po sa tatlong teams, ito po yung mga statistics po, mga kapatid. We're showing you this, not because uh, sure kami na sila ay tumanggap. Hindi po namin alam po yun, mga kapatid. No? But we are just counting para po mai-report natin sa inyo uh, yung uh, kumbaga magi accountable din po kami sa inyo because you supported this event you have prayed for this and you have uh, uh, also shared resources para po dito sa event so uh, by the way sa bible naman nakita naman natin even yung si 
sa book of Acts that they are counting no yung mga tao na sumunod sa Panginoon sa bautismo. Yeah, 3000 people uh, came to Christ uh, on the day of Pentecost. And so let's see mga kapatid dito yung mga ilang stats. Um una po yung OJ participants po natin yung mga nag uh, reach out sa mga, sa communities. We have 78 people. No? This is the biggest uh, delegation or participants ng natin from GSEP Santa Rosa uh, since we started OJ no uh, three years ago yan so puri yung po ang Panginoon at uh, of course 15 from uh, 15 po mula sa ay galing po sa Kamuning no KBCF yan so and uh, the rest po mga taga GCF Santa Rosa so we have team taga po Makabling at saka po team Kalamba So ang mga nakausap po nila, ang nakausap po ng ating mga participants na uh, ay 456. At yung na-sharean po ng gospel, mga kapatid, 378. Praise the Lord. Ayan, so yung pong mga nag-commit po na tumanggap, no? uh, nagsumunod sa prayer ng time po na yon, nag-respond sa gospel ay 288 people. Praise be to God. And of course, Meron mga interested for follow-up, mga 161 people. By the way, isama po natin yan sa prayer. Kasi isa sa goal po ng OJ natin, ma-follow-up po natin yung mga na-share ng gospel. Kasi hindi lang naman tayo inutusan ng Panginoon na mag-share ng gospel, but to disciple people. No? So yung pag-share lang po ng gospel is the first step for the discipleship na makasunod sila sa Panginoon. So let's pray po mga kapatid. Uh, yesterday, we, uh, ang mga leaders natin, ang elders ay nag-meeting kung paano natin ma- pa-follow po itong mga tao po. So let's pray na magkaroon po ng mga growth groups at Bible study groups doon po sa mga barangay at sa mga village na ating pong pinuntahan. So ang mga nakapunod po pala ng Jesus film natin ay 425 people. So purin po ang Panginoon sa mga kaluluwa na nakarinig ng Ebanghelyo this past uh, week or last Holy Week. No? So purin po ang Panginoon. Ayan. So Uh, ito naman po, announcement po natin. Next week na po yung continuation ng ating FOF. Alam niyo po yung FOF? Hindi po yan F to F, no? FOF means Fundamentals of the Faith. This is uh, every month po ito. Uh, sa Sunday po, meron po ulit. After the second service, meron lang po 100 pesos na registration, but this is for the food. Yung training po natin is just for free. No? So pwede po kayong pumunta rito. Kung kumain na naman po kayo, Pwede po kayo pumunta dito without paying anything. Uh, libre po. But if you want to avail of food, uh, you may want to register as early as now para ma-order po tayo ng, ng pagkain. Okay? Sige po. Sige po. Um, another announcement po, we will be celebrating our 18th anniversary this coming April 28. Ayan. So... Ang title po, ng at, ang tema po natin is Abound in Love. It is our prayer that on our 18th year ay mas mag-umapaw tayo sa pag-ibig no? bilang mga Kristiyano. Mag-umapaw tayo sa pag-ibig sa isa't isa, pag-ibig sa Panginoon, at pag-ibig sa ibang tao din na mga hindi pa nakakakilala sa ating Panginoon. So we'll be giving you some announcements uh, in the coming Sundays, yung mga details po, but uh, please... Paki uh, calendar nyo po sa inyong mga schedule po yan, yung ating uh, anniversary. April 28th, last Sunday of this month. Uh, this time, we'd like to welcome our first-timers. If you're here for the first time, uh, we want to urge you to please stand up no, para makilala po namin po kayo. Meron po ba? May mga first-timers po ba tayo? Sige po, tayo po kayo. And yun, praise the Lord. No, welcome po. Oh, meron din po sa likod. Welcome po sa GCF. Praise God. Magkakasama po kayong lahat. Pati yung nasa likod nyo. Kasama nyo rin sila. Wow, praise God. Welcome po sa GCF. Mga kaibigan yata ito ni Kuya Paul. No? Thank you po Kuya Paul for inviting your barangay. <laughs> Buong barangay na to. Praise God, praise God. Meron po tayong uh, visitor center at the back. Pwede po kayong mag-spend ng uh, few minutes after the worship para makapagkapi-kapi po kayo with some of our volunteers. So we want to get to know you po, mga kapatid. And we hope to see you again next time. No? Sana po hindi po ito yung huli na makasama namin kayo. Ayan, so as we continue, let me just greet our birthday celebrants.
Today po, birthday ni Sister Narna Lastimoso. Narito siya kanina. Brother Nino, yung kumanta rito sa kanina, sa harapan. Kuya Nino Lozano. Deacon Conrad Colcol, siya po ay nasa silang po ngayon sa ating outreach. And of course, si Genesis. Dito ba si Genesis Carta? Ayan, yung uh, daughter ni, ano, uh, ni Deacon Deacon Melody. So, happy birthday po sa lahat ng celebrants. Do we, do we still have celebrants na hindi ko po nabanggit? Uh, for this week po, pwede po kayong tumas ng kamay para ma-greet ko po kayo. Ayan, yung iba po nagkakamot lang. Okay, sige po. Happy birthday po sa inyo pong lahat sa mga celebrants po natin. Tayo pong lahat ay magsitayo and let's um, receive uh, God's blessing. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Have a blessed week po, mga kapatid. Thank you po, Pastor, for the words of encouragement. And happy birthday, kaya ninyo. <laughs> Before we part, please, um, Let's sing Christ our glory. <laughs> 